Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Ruan Vikramarachi. Uh, so today I'll be uh, talking about uh, uh, some uh, interesting work that we are doing uh, with respect to autonomous driving domain. Um, so uh, are you guys, uh, I'm sure you are familiar with uh, autonomous driving. So uh, what are the interesting things that you read uh, and are interested about uh, autonomous driving? Okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. Right. Okay. All interesting stuff. Uh, so uh, let me uh, get back to uh, these, you know, glitches that you mentioned uh, in a couple of slides. So when you talk about uh, autonomous driving, uh, let me just. Uh... So uh, when you, when we talk about autonomous driving, uh, there are different uh, uh, levels of automation. So the Society of uh, uh, Automotive engineers say they have uh, defined different uh, five levels of automation. So the level zero is where you don't have any automation. When it comes to level one, uh, it's basically the vehicle is uh, controlled by the driver, but some driver assist uh, features are actually available uh, in the car. Uh, when you move on to the partial automation, which is level two, uh, so the vehicle has some combined uh, automated functions like um, the acceleration control uh, and the steering control, but the driver needs to, you know, remain engaged with the vehicle. When it comes to uh, level three, uh, that we call the uh, Okay, so um, now uh, let's look at uh, where we are in terms of uh, the progress that we made, uh, made in the autonomous driving. So in the 1950s, uh, we started with uh, uh, focusing on the safety uh, features. So where we looked at, uh, you know, cruise control. So we uh, have, you know, seat belts introduced uh, and then anti-lock uh, brake systems. Uh, in the era we have, uh, from 2000 to for example the electronic stability control the blind spot detection that you have in the cars so those were introduced during the 2000-2010 time uh, then uh, up until 2016 we had more um, advanced features like uh, you know rear wave uh, video uh, automatic emergency braking uh, and the uh, lane centering assistance uh, kind of technologies so, focusing on a partially automated safety. So basically you would have, you know, lane keeping assisting, the adaptive uh, cruise, cruise control and the, the traffic jams. So uh, the National Highway and Transportation Safety Agency, they are expecting, uh, they are anticipating uh, it would take 2025 uh, 
to have level five autonomy. So as of now, we have a level three cars. Um, so the crews uh, and uh, Teslas and some of the uh, companies like Mercedes-Benz, uh, they have uh, now deployed uh, cars with level. Next, uh, um, to, to make these autonomous cars, so you have different components. So if, if you look at the hardware components, so we have a lot of sensors, uh, different kinds of sensors doing different kinds of uh, uh, stuff. For example, the radars uh, here, you have you know, multiple radars, so basically scanning the, the road while you drive. And then uh, you have six cameras. So you would get, since you don't have you know, uh, a human to look at uh, the 360 uh, degrees of uh, uh, visibility, so the cameras are placed, so you would have um, you know, 360 view. Then uh, there's a, another sensor called LIDAR, which is a bit expensive uh, compared to other sensors. So that is actually um, trying to model the three D uh, model the three D uh, world around you. So basically, you would have you know both dynamic and the static uh, objects identified. Now uh, these are the some of the hardware components, hardware sensors. Then uh, if you look at the the software components, you would have uh, you know uh, communication. Uh, so basically, bunch of software handling the communication. Uh, you would have to communicate with different components of the car. Then uh, the perception module is uh, something uh, that mimics your eyes. So basically uh, you have a bunch of sensors, right? So those sensors are actually actively perceiving the local Road, uh, where you are. So, are you in the middle lane? Are you on the you know left side? So, if you are trying to you know um, take an exit, then you have to be on the rightmost lane. So, those kind of stuff are actually determined by the the localization. Uh, then uh, you would need a planning and control uh, because uh, based on how others react on the road. So, basically, you will have to determine your next step. So, basically, in addition to what you see, you will have to actually think of uh, how others would behave. So that's the uh, that's the job for the planning and control. And the prediction part is uh, assisting to determine uh, you know your next steps. Now uh, to enable these different software components, so we have uh, several uh, you know AI models developed uh, for several tasks. For example, uh, computer vision algorithms are actively uh, you know. Uh, reading the uh, the inputs from cameras and the lidar sensors, so you can have the real time object detection and recognition. Uh, for example, here, while you so while you're actually you know driving, uh, you would have to detect what the uh, the objects in front of you, uh, and so basically associate a semantic type. For example, here you can see that uh, we have labels like car, pedestrian, person. Uh, attached to each uh, a boundary box. Then uh, uh, I actually talked about this localization in this previous slide. Uh, so for the localization, it's also uh, looking at bunch of different uh, sensors. So and uh, GPS uh, signals. So you will have to gather uh, information from multiple sources uh, to determine your exact location and the relative location with respect to other uh, objects on the road. Then uh, the trajectory planning, uh, I briefly talked about uh, before. So you need to uh, plan not just your trajectory, you will have to plan the trajectory of other actors. So for example, you have, uh, you're driving through a, uh, you know, a urban uh, a road. So basically uh, there are, you know, if there's a school nearby, then you would see that some of the, you know, students might cross actual, cross the uh, road and, uh, if you see a, a pedestrian, you would have to determine what would be the next step uh, of that pedestrian if 
if uh, that pedestrian is actually uh, standing beside the uh, crosswalk. Uh, so for all, almost all the tasks, uh, we use different types of AI models. Then uh, uh, to realize this vision, so we have to go through several uh, key challenges. Uh, so one uh, challenge is the hardware limitations. So uh, the current sensors that we use for different parts of the uh, car, they are not uh, optimal. So basically, for example, if I want to, um, if I want the cameras on the on the car to be my eyes, so they don't have the resolution my eyes have. And then uh, uh, if I use a, a radar sensor, then the radar sensor doesn't have uh, a large range. So basically, if if I uh, if there's a occlusion uh, by a large object, so these sensors can only do so much. So basically, uh, there are active research going on how to improve the, the quality of the sensors, how to improve the reliability uh, and all those things. Then uh, there are some uh, software limitations. So um, the current AI, even including the current AI uh, software, so they are not performing at 100%. So as you know that uh, when you develop the AI model, so you get uh, a certain number of accuracy, but uh, that is not 100%. So there's, there are errors that you uh, can expect from these models. Then um, another challenge with driving specific, uh, especially is uh, the open road driving. So when you are driving, um, you as a human, you, you'd have, you know, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, you can ask, yeah. yeah. Um, but as far as like, like the camera system works, like you know, with the vehicle, uh, like sometimes like you get the weather system like maybe they, from like working to the best of the ability. Mm -hmm. Like some backup cameras and some cars, mm -hmm. when it rains, the rain kind of you know yeah. blocks it out. So like, how would you approach like weather conditions? Like, we That's a very good question. Like, yeah. Like, snow, like, ice cream, you know, between like. You know. I'll be talking about the exact topic uh, in. Uh, yeah, a couple more slides. So that that's in fact uh, 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 one of the main uh, you know use in the car has well defined regulations to uh, you know control the uh, development and the safety of these uh, self driving cars and the other thing is, uh, the last thing is the trust. So let's assume that we have the level five autonomy. Then as a society, how um, uh, how would we accept uh, the, the level five automation? Then can we, you know, trust, uh, you know, I take a nap uh, while the cars actually drive me to my destination. So these are some of the challenges. So I mean, and I don't know how you, I mean, and maybe you have as to how AI would overcome that is the physics of stopping the vehicle when someone steps out in front of you. Whether right. The cameras can respond faster than a yeah. muscle scan. But, right. You know, it's always going to be that way. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's a, uh, it's an open question. So even if we say that we have level five autonomy, we don't know whether the society would accept that. So, and, you know, they would trust their lives, uh, uh, you know, completely. <laughs> yeah. So uh, now several of you actually raised questions. So, so there are some glitches uh, in the AI, right? So let's look at some examples. Uh, so how good the current AI is. So these uh, examples I collected. So this uh, is a dash cam uh, video. Sorry? Sorry? No, no, I'm saying, oh my God, like, please. Yeah. So this is the first fatality recorded uh, uh, with respect to a self-driving car. This is back in 2018 uh, in Arizona. Uh, 
there is an Uber uh, test, test vehicle. So, so it was actually driving um, on a dark road. Uh, here you can see that uh, that pedestrian is actually not, it, it's not uh, cycling. So it's, he's, uh, she's not cycling. She's actually jaywalking. So when the uh, NHSDA uh, uh, investigated uh, this uh, incident, what they found was uh, uh, this. So all the uh, all the examples that we fed into the car. Uh, so we had you know people crossing the road on crossroads. So, but the the concept of jaywalking was not. This is a confusing scenario. So there's a bicycle involved, but uh, she's not you know apparently the bicycle. So that's not the cyclist. Uh, so she's walking. Uh, without having a you know crosswalk, so those things uh, so human would interpret that oh this is a jaywalking situation we have seen this, but since the car has no so the, the second situation is uh, recorded uh, in June uh, two thousand twenty uh, this is in Taiwan so uh, I think this is a Tesla so <laughs> there was a you know truck uh on the highway so we have not seen a truck in this position on the highway so it just like crashed into uh yeah the <laughs> the vehicle then this is a more recent uh, in santa barbara uh, california uh, last august so um there's a, a project called uh, you know a drone project so they're actually uh you know testing uh, the capabilities of uh, these uh, you know self driving systems so this is a, a tesla uh, actually, you know, driving through <laughs> uh, a dummy. Yeah. Right. How, how, if there is a, like, the, uh, like the job situation, because, like, like, I'm, well, I don't know, I may be wrong, but I feel like, you know, with the country song that we have now, there's, like, people kind of hack into, like, like, you know, yeah. AI system, I'm pretty sure. So, like, how 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 good is the, the security standard? That's a good question. So uh, there's an active research field called uh, uh, automotive safety. So what they're focusing on is there are different. So like I mentioned, there are different hardware components and software components, right? So like you said, uh, attackers can attack several components, probably hijack uh, uh, some some functionalities. So they're actually looking at uh, different ways to prevent. Uh, you know these kind of uh, malicious attacks. So these autonom automotive safety uh, groups around the world they actually uh, actively working on uh, uh, you know how to. Uh, so basically, if you take you know inputs from the cameras, so how would you you know protect the uh, the feed so nobody can you know hack into the the feed and replace it with some other you know uh, inputs. Yeah, there are some active research going on uh, in that area. It's an open question. Yeah. Then uh, so next uh, so 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 far I have you know talked about uh, uh, different levels of automation and Yeah. Okay. Children are innocent. Right. Okay. Exactly. So, uh, we humans, we would expect uh, there could be a child following the ball because, uh, from the looks of it, this is a residential neighborhood. There are several cars parked and the bowl on the road. So as you correctly uh, predicted, uh, so we humans would assume that, uh, um, you know, there would be a child or a dog following that bowl, right? But let's, uh, let's talk, let's uh, think from the perspective of an autonomous car uh, that is actually relying on the 
uh, training uh, from multiple you know large amounts of data so if the data that we trained the uh, computer you know autonomous car on has not seen this kind of a situation so it won't be able to say that uh, you know there could be a child uh, following that uh, you know a ball so we were thinking uh, so how do we address this problem so we humans have an innate understanding of the world we know you know uh, if there's a ball you know children play with the ball so basically since it's a residential neighborhood there's a likelihood that children live in the residential neighborhood so uh, our solution uh, includes uh, something uh, that that mimics the world uh, knowledge so basically uh, we we have already heard the you know knowledge graphs so what we do is we structure the the domain of driving in a graph for example here in this situation you have a scene uh, this uh, you know the pole uh, and the, the objects like cars so basically we represent what we see uh, on the road in addition to that we represent the high, you know relations uh, among uh, different objects that we see so basically you know a ball is subclass of a toy and children play with a uh, toy so uh, and child is a, pers a subclass of person and the person live in uh, lives in a residential neighborhood so if we have this kind of a uh, you know hierarchical uh, or relational knowledge present then even even the computer vision models can uh, you know detect these objects it could not infer that they are if you have a, a knowledge graph or a world model like this we could infer okay, there could be a possibility of seeing a child based on the other objects that you have already uh, observed um then in the next uh, uh, project so we are actually looking at the uh, entity labeling so what i mean by entity labeling is uh, so i mentioned these autonomous cars are trained on vast amount of data right so you need good quality annotated data so you have to have you know if i take this uh, a photo of this one this this uh, scene so i want to identify what are the unique objects so you have you know students uh, you have whiteboards you know uh, lights projectors and all those things so basically uh, in a, a self driving uh, training in self driving training you get access to this uh, vast amount of uh, good high quality data but uh, as i have explained and some of you have actually uh, mentioned these systems are not uh, 100 at performing at 100% so in this example let's say that uh, uh, the person in p is currently occluded by this uh, you know blue car right so if the uh, camera that is focusing on the front uh, of the car uh, didn't detect uh, this this uh, person occluded person so it might not label that because uh, there are no visual cues to understand a person in this scene so uh, in this kind of situations entities can go unlabeled uh, in the data sets then uh, the degrading weather so uh, you pointed out that you know if there's rain uh, foggy or snow situations and then we might not have you know full visibility so the uh, well then uh, there can be some sense of failures so we have a camera let's say uh, the camera stopped working uh, in the middle of the drive so what happens in that situation so these entities can go unobserved then uh, these computer vision models uh, they are not perfect so they may can make errors so because of that some entities might uh, go unobserved then um, uh these are the limitations of some sensors so for example let's say that the current uh, uh, camera i use has the field of view of only you know uh, 60 degrees so it is not as good as a camera with uh, 90 degrees of field of view so these are the, the limitations so if uh, if object appearing beyond that 60 degrees then it might not label that then uh, the other situation is uh, uh, this dealing with the new uh, new situations so if uh, if we have encountered something completely new that we have not seen so they might not get labeled so all this uh, uh, scenario
ايه ده Uh, basically, what happens here is that uh, let's say that you give a, a ball uh, to a kid and then you uh, just hide it. So around two years of our you know psychological you know cognitive development, uh, we would gain this ability called object permanence. So like peekaboo is a game that uh, that is developed to test this ability. So we take inspirations from uh, this this uh, you know psychological phenomena. Uh, let's say how can we apply this to the autonomous driving. So in timestamp T, uh, the person is occluded. So uh, it's like the, the bowl uh, here. Then in the next timestamp, the person appears in front of the car. So in that case, you uh, can, even though at timestamp T, the person was occluded, the person was actually in the seat. So we are trying to apply this object permanence with respect to autonomous driving. So we can label that even uh, though you don't, uh, the computer vision algorithms don't detect the pedestrian there, there's actually a pedestrian in that scene. Um, I can actually uh, show you a, a quick demo of uh, uh, this idea. So, uh, I'm using one of the uh, popular autonomous driving data sets. So a scene is basically, now I said that, you know, this car has multiple cameras, right? So if I load um, the cameras of this particular scene, then there are six uh, views. So the front, back, and the left, right, six views. So uh, currently this scene is labeled with, uh, uh, yeah, this set of uh, uh, annotations. So you have the, you know, pedestrian, uh, pickup truck, road sign, all those things. Now, uh, we assume that even though uh, they are not labeled, there can be some unobserved entities in this particular scene. So after applying our technique, what we uh, get is uh, this scene includes this uh, bicycle, pedestrian with object, sitting, and a person with a rider. So let's actually look at whether this is true. So if you zoom in on this image, uh, okay, you see that uh, in this car, there's a there's a person and person is holding an object. Since that person has actually not come out of the car yet, so it was actually not labeled currently. But in the next couple of scenes, he's coming out of the car. So that that is that then at that point, this this uh, particular object is uh, labeled as you know person with object. So by using the object continuity, we are inferring that even though that pedestrian has not come out of the car, the pedestrian is actually there. So this pedestrian with object uh, label can be associated with the current uh, image. Current scene. Yeah, I think uh, uh, that's the the demo for the clue. Uh, do you have any questions? So, um, permanence is not actually, so this is not a, you know, a learned model. So what we do is we take the uh, output from the computer vision models. So that you, you have AI models doing the computer vision stuff, you know, recognizing objects and labeling them, right? So we take those output and we order the scenes uh, with the temporal properties that they have. For example, for each timestamp, what are the uh, images and what are the labels associated with those images? Then we apply the, the object permanence. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So one of the problems you mentioned all this time is that uh, it's in the same situation. Mm -hmm. the that right. Yeah. So how is the object permanence? 
So object permanence is actually not uh, addressing that that uh, solution. So basically, so we have I discussed two solutions, right? So this is actually improving the quality of the data. So the previous project that I have explained, the knowledge-based entity prediction, that is addressing the uh, uh, these unforeseen uh, situations. Oh, with that, I, I kind of still don't understand it because I thought that was just, that was just a bit of no based on the data source. Not really, not really. So uh, in the first project. Uh, so these are the unforeseen situations, right? So basically, you have the ball, but you don't know where the whether there's a you know child following that ball. Yes, background information. So we, in, yes, we actually integrate uh, common sense uh, knowledge with this. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, 